In this video, we will find the domain, the y-intercept, the x-intercepts, the x-value of any holes, the vertical asymptotes, the horizontal asymptote, or oblique asymptote of the given rational function. The given rational function f of x is equal to two polynomials, one on top of another. The polynomial in the top is quadratic, x squared minus 2x minus 8 and the polynomial in the denominator is also quadratic, x squared minus 6x minus 16. What we can do to answer this question the most effectively is to first factor both the numerator and the denominator. So they each have a lead coefficient of 1, which makes it convenient to quickly factor using trial and error. I know I'm going to have x is the first term in each of my binomials, and then I can look at the sign in the numerator on my last value, negative 8, the constant term, so that tells me I'm going to have one of each sign, and same thing with the bottom. The negative constant tells me I'm going to have one of each sign in my denominator. All right, now let's look at negative 8 in the numerator and find two numbers that multiply to give us negative 8, but add to give us negative 2. So what would that be? How about 2 and 4? You want to give the larger number the negative since your middle term is negative. So I would do negative 4 and positive 2. Looking at the denominator now, we see a constant term of negative 16. So we want to find two numbers that will multiply to give us negative 16, but add up to give us negative 6. So once again, we're going to give the larger number the negative sign here. And how about 2 times 8? And we'll give the 8, we'll put the 8 with the negative since it's larger because we want a middle term that is negative. All right, now, now that we've done that, we can quickly answer number 1, which is the domain. The domain is the set of all the x values that when plugged into our rational function, will not make the denominator equal 0. Remember, fractions are divisions, and you can't divide by 0. It's undefined. So any x value that we could plug in and get a 0 in the denominator should be excluded from the domain. So we can see here that if we plugged in 8 for x, we would get a 0 in the denominator. So we should exclude, not allow, x to equal 8. We should also not allow x to equal 2, or negative 2 rather. On a number line, let's say negative 2 is over here and 8 is over here, well, we want to avoid the negative 2 and the positive 8. So our domain in interval notation would start at negative infinity and go up to negative 2 union starting at negative 2 again on the other side going up to 8 and then union 8 towards positive infinity so that's the answer to our part 2 and our part 1 answer that is our part 1 answer <laughs> that's what i'm trying to say okay so let's write that here So from negative infinity to negative 2, union negative 2 to 8, union 8 to infinity. All right. Now, the next part, we want the y-intercepts. Now, remember, a y-intercept is where the graph crosses the y-axis. On the y-axis, x is always 0. So we were looking for a point that has 0 for x. So we can just evaluate f of 0 in our original function. So in the top, I would have 0 squared minus 2 times 0 minus 8. And in the bottom, I would have 0 squared minus 6 times 0 minus 16. All of this stuff cancels to 0. And then I have negative 8 divided by negative 16, which simplifies to positive 1 half. So that is the y value of my ordered pair where the graph crosses the y-axis. Part 3, we're asked for the x-intercepts, 
and the x-intercepts occur wherever we have a zero for the y. So we should set the whole function equal to zero and solve for x. But really, all we need is to set the numerator equal to zero, because if we have zero in the numerator, then the whole thing will become zero. So we want to set x minus 4 quantity times x plus 2 quantity equal to zero and solve. So if I set each one of these factors equal to zero, then I'll get the two places where um, this would create a zero for the y value. Okay, so we have the first factor, we're going to add 4 to both sides. The second factor, we're going to add negative 2 to both sides. And so now we have two points where the y value will be 0 at negative 2 comma 0 and also at positive 4 comma 0. The only catch is, if you notice, these two factors on top and bottom, the quantity x plus 2, cancels to 1. So what that means is that we're really only interested in x minus 4. So we're going to have just the one x-intercept at 4 comma 0. I can write it nicely. Okay, then we have x value of any holes. Well, that factor that we just canceled off, that we solved for x before, that is one of the removable discontinuities or holes. So we're going to have a hole at negative 2. Okay, holes occur where both the numerator and the denominator would be 0 at the same time. All right, so we're done with the part 4. And then vertical asymptotes. Well, the vertical asymptotes happen at the same places that we found um, discontinuities or, or um, excluded values for the domain. Except, again, we don't pay attention to the ones that cancel because that counts as a whole. We're going to have a vertical asymptote at the other value that was excluded from the domain at x equals 8. Okay, so the, the vertical asymptote occurs at x equals 8. All right, next we're going to look at the horizontal asymptote. Okay, now what we do is we see if there is a horizontal asymptote. There's two cases where you can have a horizontal asymptote and then one case where you could have an oblique or slanted asymptote. And you will only ever have one of the two. All right, so if we have the horizontal asymptote, then we know there is no oblique asymptote and vice versa, okay? So let's see, there's two cases where you could have a horizontal asymptote. One of them is if the numerator's degree is lower than the denominator degree. Here we have the degree is the same and that's the other case where you can have a horizontal asymptote. If the top was smaller in degree than the bottom, we would say that the horizontal asymptote was just the x-axis or y equals zero. But here we don't have that. We have the same degree on the top and the bottom polynomials. So that means we look at the coefficients of our lead terms and we make a fraction out of them and that will be the constant for our horizontal asymptote. So notice that the coefficient on my lead term in the numerator is 1 and the coefficient on my lead term in the denominator is 1. So 1 divided by 1 is just 1. So I have a horizontal asymptote at y equals 1. y equals 1. Okay. So that means there is no slanted or oblique asymptote. And we are done with all of these parts. This is what the graph would look like. And this is why we're really investigating, so that we can graph 
the rational function. So notice that we have that vertical asymptote. Where did we say it was going to be? The vertical asymptote was going to be at x equals 8. So you can see here's 5, x equals 5, 6, 7, 8. And if I draw a vertical line through x equals 8, kind of hard to get it straight, but you can see that there is a little vertical asymptote there. And also we said that there would be a horizontal asymptote at y equals 1. And here's where y equals 1. So notice that there does appear to be a horizontal asymptote or an electric fence through y equals 1. We also should see a hole at um, x equals negative 2. So x equals negative 2 right here. There should be a hole. And what else? Let's do that with a different color. Let's do that with, um, I was going to use blue. There we go. x equals negative 2. So right on the graph at x equals negative 2, we have a hole. And what else do we want to observe? We have x-intercepts, we have y-intercepts, so we have a y-intercept at the point 0, 1 half. So 0, 1 half, yep, that looks about right. Okay, there's an uh, the y-intercept. And then we have x-intercept at 4, 0. 4, 0 right there. And that's the only x-intercept. Okay, what else should we notice? I think we've covered it all, right? So that's why we like to answer questions like this so that we can sketch the graph of a rational function.